In this video, parents, I just wanna help draw attention to a very scary issue that's happening amongst our tweens and teens. And it's about their phones. And it's about the weapon, in a sense, that we're putting in our children's hands. And I think for a lot of parents, we're not realizing the risks that we are exposing our kids to. So I just kind of want to challenge all of us as parents out there to really think about how are we helping or protecting our kids with technology? How are we helping them to think through how to use technology and training them on how to avoid certain things and, you know, to make technology a good thing and not a bad thing? And I think for a lot of parents, we're not thinking that way at all. Our mindset is every kid has a phone nowadays. I mean, even from kindergarten to second grade, more and more kids are getting phones. Uh, it's, it's an easy way to get in touch with our kids, you know, in a moment's notice. I mean, those are all great and good things and phones can be great. But phones that have the ability to connect to the internet are also exposing our kids to a lot of dangers. And as parents, we need to wake up and we need to pay attention to those dangers and we need to help protect our kids from those dangers. So in this video, I'm just going to give you some helpful thoughts and, and actually some scary statistics that hopefully will encourage all of us to get in the game here of getting more active in protecting our kids and educating them on the dangers and the things that they need to avoid online. As I did some research for this video, I came upon some pretty scary research that the largest group of internet porn consumers are the ages of 12 to 17 years old. Now think about that. For a lot of us, pornography used to be an adult issue. It used to be something that you had to go find, uh, you know, the naughty magazines under your parents' bed, or you had to go to the store to buy it. And so a lot of people were just, that, that was too embarrassing, so people didn't do it. Well, that's not the case anymore with the internet. Now it's in the, in the hand, it's in the privacy of your own room and in your own home, and nobody has to know. Parents, that's the largest group viewing pornography are ages 12 to 17. Now you might think your 12 year old doesn't even really understand exactly what's happening sexually, but they're being exposed to it. In fact, it was saying that for most kids, like 70% of kids, the first time they view pornography or pornographic images is when they're doing a project for homework. So see parents, we gotta wake up here. That Google search, putting something in as innocent as it might be, could very well be bringing up images that your kid didn't go looking for, but came through that internet search. And so then lo and behold, of course, they're curious and they start looking at it and then there, there goes and there breeds this desire for more. So parents, we, we can't sit anymore idly by and think, well, my kid's not doing that or they don't even know what those websites are. It, they come to them. And in fact, the research also showed that only 15% of parents are even aware of what their kids are doing with their phones and online. That just can't be, parents. We don't send our kids off by themselves at the age of 11 to a job, right? I mean, we have mindsets that we don't leave our kids home alone when they're eight because they haven't shown the maturity to handle the responsibilities of you know, cooking food or that they would make the right decision of answering the door if a stranger came to the door. I mean, there's things that we do to protect our kids at certain ages, but yet we give them a phone and we think they're going to be fine. No, the answer to that is no. And parents, we need to wake up. So here's just a couple of practical things that I think as parents we can do is first of all, our kids should never have their phones in their rooms at night. Remove that temptation from your kids because they have access to all sorts of stuff on their phones. Have them charge in the kitchen or somewhere in the common area of the home where they don't have access when you're not around. That's a great way to just kind of protect your kids from temptation and helps you to be aware of just guarding your kids. You should go on their phones and check their search history. You should do that on a weekly basis. And you should be honest with your kids to say, I pay for the phone and as your parent, I need to protect you. And so I'm gonna look at your phone when I want to. You need to have important conversations with your kids all the time about their social media activity, that everything they put out there has a footprint and it can be found, that they, how they represent themselves in photos online, in tweets that they send, are all out there for other people to see, which could have major consequences when they're looking for a job or trying to get into college or want a scholarship someday. Now, you might not think about that at 13, but by the time you're 18, now that's going to be a problem. 
but have meaningful conversations with them regarding why it's important to represent yourself in a responsible way on social media. Ask them why they want to be on social media and what do people get caught up in and wondering about likes and how many followers you have. And just talk to them about the importance of not getting caught up in that and then not wanting to do more outrageous behavior to get more attention online. Have important conversations, real conversations with your kids. Talk to them about the importance of not reaching out or talking or giving away personal information to just anyone on the internet. There are people out there that are going to pose as a kid and they're actually an adult up to no good. Your kids need to understand that. I mean, parents, at the end of the day, if we're going to give our kids phone and an access to the internet through that phone, then we have got to help protect them and educate them. We can't just assume that they're not doing anything bad. And at least in my mind, for me and my kids, I'm on some of their social media accounts. So I see what they're posting and I see what other kids are posting. And if I see something concerning, I talk to my kids about, why do you think so-and-so put that picture up or that tweet out there? And we have a conversation about what that might say about them or what the risk is in that and have a conversation of why they shouldn't engage in that similar kind of behavior. So it becomes a tool of teaching and coaching and training and not just something that we're just either just turning a blind eye to or don't give our kids a phone at all and just say, you know, now my pattern of behavior will just be they're not allowed to have a phone. Well, I don't think that's the answer either. We got to train our kids to know how to interface with this world, but we shouldn't just give them a phone and assume they're going to figure it out. So those are just a couple of easy suggestions, but parents, phones are a danger. Be aware of what your kids are doing online. Be aware of what they're doing on social media and get in the game because you do not want your kids to just have free access to all that the world and the internet has to offer and then think that that isn't going to have major consequences on your kids and their character and potentially even in their future.